The purpose of this demonstration is to illustrate how to chart down information that, are, that is prudent to the laboratory to know what it is that we need to do in order to achieve good results. After you have taken the shade from the shade guides, we have to know the relationship between dentin and enamel, the lobes and translucencies, and all the effects that appear in the tooth. So I'm going to demonstrate right now how this is being done. So the first thing we need to do is we need to take a look at the neck color of the tooth. In order to establish the neck or the root color of the tooth, you look at the CEJ uh, area and find a shade guide that fits into that area and mark what part of the tooth it's covering. And now that's how we mark those areas. We have central lateral cuspid and we mark the area that is describing as the dentin or the root color. I always use the same color pens to identify a specific location on the tooth. So I use brown as the neck or the root color. We use orange that represents the dentin area. What part of the tooth is the dentin covering? So the part of the tooth that is covered by orange is being described that way. As you can see, the orange is covering a portion of, this, of the area of the tooth. And we say, okay, the dentin is A2, and the, actually the neck color is A3. The next part is to establish the dentin development lobes. What color is it? Normally, it's a different color than the dentin. Most of the time, it's a little bit darker rather than lighter. Centrals have three lobes, and we have to decide how far is it away from the incisal edge and how long it is. The mesial lobe on the central is narrow, the middle one is narrow, and the distal one is the widest one normally. Laterals have two lobes, the distal one is always larger. Cuspids have three lobes, but they're joined together. And they're covering approximately that area of the tooth. And we can say that it's made out of A3 plus peach, typically in many situations. Then the next thing to establish is translucency. What area of the tooth we see very vivid translucency. So we mark those areas and we can see that there's translucency between the incisal edge and the lobes. That way, that way. And we mark it as translucency. I use the blue as representing translucency. The next thing to establish is the enamel color and how much of the enamel is covering the tooth. In this situation, the enamel that is covering the tooth is maybe that is visible uh, is covering approximately half of the tooth. So that will be marked with a green. Green represents a lighter enamel. Now it could be that we have a little bit more of a gray zone of enamel and we use the purple pen to describe that part. And the gray zone of enamel is a little bit in the middle third of the tooth. And that will be a dark enamel. Where the green was a light enamel. Light enamel. And at the height of contour of each tooth, we often see that the enamel has a thicker enamel zone in those areas. And we mark it again with a white enamel, but we want to elevate the, the brightness or the value. So we will say that it's a light enamel plus white. And the final thing to establish is there any um, superficial coloring, such as horizontal um, white lines or haze or any kind of hyperclassification areas, and we mark it with a yellow pen that describes external stains. So there may be some white lines horizontally in those areas, and we mark it as white stain or 101, which represents the color of white stain. So this is what we end up doing. That will be a typical scenario of a, every case that will come out of Opus One Laboratories.
with that information, along with photographs, we'll be able to achieve fantastic results for you. Thank you.